I was talking to Brian Olson yesterday, and he said there's warnings in um, Wisconsin that if you are out and about, it's the same as smoking three cigarettes. I believe it. I believe it. It's ugly out there. It looks it's, like there's a lot of people smoking cigarettes out there. <laughs> it's just all them Canadians <laughs> blowing it this way. Uh, uh, it's pretty hazy out there this morning, it but it kind of the sun came up and it's nice and shiny out there. Ice cream truck came today. Um, we were so busy getting ready for you guys that we missed the Didn't ice cream. Didn't get our truck. ice cream. Nope. And you were on vacation. I was on vacation. We were fishing. You were fishing. You did we very well fishing. fishing. Yes, we did. Tell them. Braden came and we went to Braden and Holly and I went to the College World Series. We saw Tennessee lose to LSU. That wasn't fun, but um, we had a really good time there. And then um, Braden decided he wanted to go fishing and fishing. And Braden's your son. Fishing and Braden's my son. And he will be a freshman slash junior at the University of Tennessee next year. So we were excited to have him out here and we and fished caught lots and of fish. caught a ton of fish. And we took some reference pictures that we might share with them later um, of largemouth and northerns, our silver northern. Um, we caught bluegill, we caught pumpkin seeds. On those expensive um, leeches. On, a few, on some expensive <laughs> leeches, yeah, the last of them. I think inflation I think finally got the leeches in Spirit Lake. Oh my gosh! Yes, I about went broke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had fun. We had a lot of fun. So well, it's good. Was, good to have you back. And uh, I think while you were gone, um, we worked on the caribou a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, um, kind of did some eye setting and things like that. Kind of worked a little bit on the yeah. on the face. And while you were away. Um, we managed to get him sewn up and get him, yeah. I guess, uh, prepped for drying. And yeah. we had uh, um, a lot of detail put into here. We used a lot of foam backing rod and things like that. We took it out today just to show you um, what he was gonna look like and to yeah. you know, groom him so we could do some finish work. And uh, now that we figured you didn't need to see us uh, sew and sew and sew and sew and waste a whole session sewing, <laughs> I couldn't sew up a caribou in that session and one session but um, um, now we'll do a little bit of finished work and talk about some of the the fine points of um, this pedestal mountain we're still mm -hmm. we're waiting on our pedestal um, we're not building it we're having it constructed for us and it's going to be um, kind of a naughty hickory to match yeah. the customer's um, interior of his trophy room very, very and uh, we have a supplier that makes really nice pedestals and and better than I could do so um, he's making that for us, and when that comes, we're going to attach the um, kind of the scrub juniper that we have, which we showed you in one of the earlier sessions how to um, do a pedestal attachment rod, and you've seen that yeah. many times. We've done it for deer and all kinds of different yeah, creatures, and um, so that uh, this afternoon I. Um, Thanks to your suggestion, I marked where the where oh. the pedestal square peg hole was um, yes. when we got done gluing it around the perimeter and, and sewing it up. I took a big old uh, upholstery pin and I stuck it right yeah. in the center of the tube because if you miss locating that and you start cutting, you can cut a whole lot of holes in your caribou <laughs> yeah. thinking that, that you're finding the square um, insert yeah and it can be hard to find. So with your suggestion, I stuck a, a upholstery pin in there and it felt hollow behind there. So I just took a scalpel and I cut out the little square and I took the attachment rod, which is in our um, wood that we showed you earlier. And that slips right into the caribou side. And the one thing, the ones that we get are are steel, they're not aluminum or anything like that, so they can tend to rust. So keep these well cleaned, um, oiled. When we put them together for yeah. the customer, we're gonna oil this so it slides on. Um, occasionally, if we get a little buildup of rust from the wet salted hide, um, we'll just take some fine sandpaper and sand mm -hmm. that down, because it doesn't take much to get this so it binds in there. Any special kind of oil? I just use three in one and it seems to work real good. You can use Vaseline or three in one or any kind of a grease, but um, 
it will save you a lot of jerking and tugging. And if you have to deliver these things more than once, we've struggled to try to put things together. And lining up a square peg in a square hole is not as easy <laughs> as you think when the customer's watching. Yes. So we like to, like to get it so it's an easy fit, so it goes together real easy. Um, make sure that you, uh, two things. One is like and share, like and share, like and share, oh, yeah. and you'll yeah. get something, a gift, and then um, which we'll announce at the end of the show, as well as um, text us in any questions or you know oh, any yeah. questions that you have or products, anything that we happen to be using here. Um, we have our way of doing stuff, and you might have, you know, different ways. We like your suggestions too. You know, we'll if we hear something good, Absolutely. we're all about trying new things. So um, make sure that you text us, and we'll share information or answer your questions. So with that, um, I guess you started today on an I. You put a nictitating yeah. membrane in. Yeah. And uh, um, we have clean up the eyes. Put a nictitating membrane in. Um, do some nostril work. Now you pulled out the the plastic in this nostril, and um, from what I can see, it looks pretty good in there. Minimum amount of finish work. Um, just depends. You're going to have to evaluate how good that looks and how much work you're going to have to do. But uh, um, if you sculpted those out you know, kind of with symmetry in mind, they should be pretty close. If one's bigger, one's smaller, you might have to compensate with a little bit of epoxy sculpt, a little bit of color. So that's what you did. You took that out. Um, we're going to do nictating membrane. We're going to do noses. Um, we'll build up a lip. Um, I think we want to show them a little bit on that antler velvet too because yeah. what you've done with that is pretty impressive. Uh, they came out of it pretty nice. Yeah. And just don't get overwhelmed. There's a whole lot to do. Just because he's dry doesn't mean he's done. There's a whole day's yeah. worth of work um, getting this done, it's, you know, getting all the, the fine stuff and the finish work done. So um, one, one thing at a time. Do this nostril, then do the next one. Nose is done. Um, do the antlers, antlers are done. Do the nictitating membrane on one, do it the other. You know, don't, yeah. don't look at it and go, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't know where to start. Just start, you know? Yeah, yeah. No nose pad on a caribou, that's kind of nice. Nothing, no to, nothing to finish, no little nodules to build up or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, um, that's kind of nice. Just groom him. And this caribou is a, kind of an early season caribou. It's um, reasonably short hair and um, kind of a pretty dark color. Mm -hmm. and cape is in really nice shape. Very pretty, yeah, very, very pretty. Um, he's gonna look nice, he's gonna look real nice. Well, I'll move over here and you can show him some stuff. Oh. <laughs> well, where should we start? Or should we just start? Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do next. <laughs> First thing is to make sure that he's tightened on because we don't want him tipping. Okay. Oh, good. Well, I think we'll start just in the you nose. Want to move him? Um, I think he's good, maybe. I can rotate him if you yeah. want help. I think they've got a pretty good view from there. We can do the nostril and we can do an eye from here. That should work. Um, so the first thing we'll do is remove the packing um, out of his nose. And this is just, this was put in there just to hold the skin in place. Um, all of that interior nostril work was done ahead of time, so there should be um, kind of minimal finish work now. Um, we just want to check inside and see what, what everything is, how everything dried. It's like a box it of looks... chocolates. You never know what you're going to get until <laughs> you, you pull kind of the plastic never... out and take a peek up the nostril. You never do. Um, now, if you were competing with this, you'd probably pull that nostril plastic out half a dozen times while he was drying and make sure it was all in the right place. But um, I see there's a little bit of work to do in the back, just a little bit of foam showing. But um, for the most part, the skin dried to the dried down to the shape of the interior pretty good. So um, on the other one, I just did a little bit of flesh. We had started when we showed them. Um, Pre-finishing it, um, we showed them how to color some fix-it sculpts, so we'll do that quick. 
Um, and I'll just mix some, mix a little bit of fix it scope up here. Now, sometimes and, you're going to take apart, take your plastic out of your nose, whatever kind of animal it is, and you're going to see something just didn't dry right. You're going to yeah. have maybe a fold in your skin or something that's going to be very difficult to fix. Um, that thin skin will rehydrate very easily and don't be afraid to um, squirt a little water in there, maybe pack it with some wet uh, paper towel, let it rehydrate, pull it out, put some glue on it, retuck it, reshape it. You know, that's not, um, if it dries poorly, um, it'll finish much nicer if you redo it. Yeah, worth, worth the time to retuck it, rehydrate and retuck it. That's very, very, very true. Um, just equal parts of A and B with any, we're using Fix It today. They could use probably anything, couldn't they? Um, epoxy sculpt or clay or... Somebody called in yesterday want, wanting to know if we carried... Um, um, what was it? Uh, all game? All game. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't had... All, I haven't seen all game for 20 years probably. Oh, man. It's... But it's gone from... They're all, they're all very similar but different, yeah. different attributes. There's... All gain. There used to be Pliacre, which was a dental filling yeah. material. Um, um, sculpt doll, magic sculpt, yeah. Um, yeah. all kinds of different epoxies on the market today. Um, and they all work basically the same. They're just two part, equal parts of A and B pretty much. Mix them, knead them together. Um, some set up a little bit faster, some set up a little bit smoother. Um, um, Epoxy clay sets oh, up yeah. the little bit more porous finish, like skin. We use that on African animals a lot, or where skin's yeah. going to be showing. Um, same material, just a different finish. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to color this, so I'm going to put a little bit of oil-based paint um, in the epoxy. Very, very little. It does not take very much. Um, and I'm going to, that's going to, I just used a red. That's going to give me a real pinky color and I'm going to put a dot of of um, kind of a burnt sienna color just to just to fleshy it up a little bit and then just knead it together. Now will it dry that color? Will it lighten or darken? I think it darkens. What do you darkens think? Darkens a little bit? Seems like it it darkens um, just a little, so that's a little hot. Um, you could, if you noticed it was a little hotter than you'd like it to be, you could add a little bit more of the white base to it. Um, if you had to, pinch a little bit of this out and toss it and then add a little more or white. Or paint it later um, too, right? That's what I was gonna say. We're gonna paint inside this anyways, um, so we'll leave some of these flesh tones to, to show through. So. Um, We'll put just a little bit of paint up in there so this warmer color won't really hurt anything. I'm gonna dip it in water just to keep it from sticking. And then um, we'll go inside and just do a little bit of touch up work inside the nostril. Um, this is a good time for a headlamp. If anybody's got a headlamp at home, it works pretty good to get in there with a headlamp. I don't know if you can see in there, can you? If I shine a light, maybe not very much. And oh, that's, look at that. oh, wow, that's quite a close up. Um, there we go, I got a little light in there. Um, we're just gonna blend that skin transition just a little bit. And you can see how much hair is inside the nose here. Um, we're going to fluff that up, and by the time you close that down just a little bit um, and fluff it up, it's going to look pretty nice. So anything you do in here is only going to add, um, add interest. I just have a little bit of transition to blend. And then we'll move to eyes. Um, this caribou got fancy new eyes, so that's kind of, that'll be fun to finish and see them all done. And I'm just using a little bit of a, a little slightly curved tool 
to go up inside. It's, it's got a nice curvature to it, so um, I can push the epoxy kind of where I need to and manipulate that. Blend it out. If you could get your finger, if this was a mousse, you could get your finger up in there and smooth it all out nice. But um, I'm just going to use a brush with a little bit of alcohol. Um, this is just um, isopropyl alcohol, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, isopropyl alcohol, and it just helps feather things out a little bit and blend. Um, go up inside and get that. I think that's going to be the one little spot I can come back and get. But you'll just spend some time blending any of your skin transition um, so that it's, so you don't have a big step there. If you did a good job of thinning, I think that's what you referred to earlier, if they did a good job of thinning their skin, um, it should tuck in really nice and, and um, when we did use that tuck the, nice. It did. It tucked okay. really nice. Um, it tucked really nice. It's nice and smooth. I haven't looked at it since I did it. Yeah, it tucked really nice. Really, really nice. Um, there's just one little spot. We can come back and get that um, later on, but we don't want to spend too much time on that. Now, and, now we, have, we don't have artificial caribou noses, but on animals that we do, we've got a couple sizes of whitetail, a couple sizes of mule deer, and there's no sculpting to do on those and there's yeah. the skin tucks in and there's most of the time no finish work either that's that's really nice I'll, it's going to be a lot of fun when you send me to alaska to go shoot i know for reference yeah. that <laughs> that'll be fun um i'm just going to mix a little bit of dark into this same epoxy since i have extra um to darken around the eye we'll do a nictitating membrane um, and that's something a lot of people don't do. Um, I remember when we first started using, I've told this story before, white-based eyes, and that was the rave, the white-based eyes. And so I had to be, you know, ahead of the curve, had to beat all my competition, so I got these nice white-banded eyes, not even knowing what a nictitating membrane was. So my eyes had big, gaudy, white slashes <laughs> in the front. And customers would say, they really looked, oh, yeah, state of the yeah. art, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> you got the best there is. That's funny. <laughs> a nictitating membrane will temper that white so it's not it quite does. so glaring. It does, and if they look at their reference, you'll see it's just a little bitty banana sliver in the front corner. Um, it'll cover just a little bit of this white here. Um, and all we have to do is make a little bit of room in the front corner here and with these fancy acrylic eyes you want to be super careful with your with metal tools that we don't scratch it but i'm just going to make a little bit of room right in the front And I think the key to the pre-made nictitating membranes is to make sure that you have plenty of room so that they don't pinch from top to bottom. Um, this is the membrane here. Ooh, look at that. That's good, isn't it? It holds still. Oh. He's so lifelike. He's <laughs> Um, so this is the membrane. There we go. Something like that. And we're only going to use a small amount of that. But if our eye shape, if I put my hand up here, that's going to be hard. Um, if the eye shape pinches the top and bottom, it will cause it to bow off of the eye and it won't lay flat. So by making plenty of room in the front corner, you can prevent that nictitating membrane from 
from bowing off of the eye, and that's, you see that a lot um, with the manufactured nictitating membranes. Now, if they didn't want to use a manufactured one, they could sculpt it from sure. the sculpting material. Yeah, you can take your sculpting material, like your fix-it sculpt, epoxy sculpt, any of the um, two-pound, two-part two epoxies, and you can make your own. You can color it, just like you did. Um, my problem is I can make a beautiful nictitating membrane, but I can't make the other one match. That's, that's, that's the difficult part. It's easier yeah. for me to use either bought ones. Um, a lot of people use little pieces of plastic, like um, I've heard of people use oh, yeah. um, Weight Watchers. They have a little black uh, tray that the food comes yeah. in and those different food companies. And you can trim out a nictitating membrane that works. That works. Yeah, that actually and works. And you don't need, good. like you said, you don't need that whole big piece, though that's how big the nictitating membrane is in that yeah. caribou. But by putting all of that in, you've got skin shrinking, you've got clay contracting, and you're going to get warpage as things dry. Yep. Then you're going to fight an air gap between the two. Yeah, yep. And, and this is made so that the nictitating membrane does actually pull. And if you were trying to accomplish a specific attitude, you could show more or less of it. So it's plenty big. Um, we're not going to show very much. This is a pretty relaxed caribou with a pretty average eye set. I think we'll just cut a little sliver. I got here with everything but my scissors. Oops, so I'll find you. Might... You had a pair. Oh, I see some. Perfect. So I'm just going to cut a little wedge out of this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Those are fancy. Those are even curvy. Yeah, no, I hope they um, work. <laughs> I'm going to cut just a little wedge. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, along the bottom, and then again along the top. And I'll complete these cuts as soon as I show you where I cut it. So we'll stretch it so you can see. Is that black glove doesn't help, does it? Maybe if I put it up against the white. You see where we cut it, top and bottom? So you just cut a little triangle out of the yeah. middle. Yeah, yep. That little triangle in the middle is what we're going to use. The top and bottom piece I'm going to get rid of. So I wish I had three hands. That would be helpful. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the bottom piece off. And this is just an approximate. It's always a good idea to test fit it once. Let's see, I'm a little long. Fancy scissors. Where'd those come from? Work good? I don't know. <laughs> they do work good. Um, and now I'm just going to take that and I'm going to slide it right in the corner of his eye. And it's going to go right there. If you can see that. Right now, it's pulled way out. I want to push it in further, and I feel a little resistance. So, um, But that's the idea. We're going to have it. It's going to slope back this way, across the eye, slightly. Like a slippery slide. Yeah. Yeah. Open this up just a little bit. And then we'll slide that right in there. He's so lifelike, he's trying to jump off the stand. It's wiggly. Okay. I think that'll go in there real good. Now, I'm just going to take the epoxy that I had, this little bit of flesh, and I'm just going to darken it a little bit with a black. Black or brown, <laughs> either one. Which Figured. did you want? I, know. <laughs> I couldn't I, tell if you were disappointed or happy. No, I was 
I actually wanted black, but I thought, oh, as soon as I say black, it's probably going to be brown and somebody's going to catch me. Um, oh, but we're going to darken it. And all we're trying to do is basically match that skin tone. It's dark anyways, so we may as well um, use a darker epoxy. Um, just less paint required when we, when we go to blend the two. And that would depend on the animal too, wouldn't it? Like a, yeah. a white tail or something with a lighter complexion in the eyes and the yeah. membranes. You yeah. probably would go a lighter color. Um, I like to start with flesh on a lot of stuff and, and paint the dark, kind of tone the flesh down to match. But um, if you match this color perfectly, you wouldn't really even have a whole bunch of finish right. work on this guy. Um, the skin's dried nice color so I just mix it until the until there's no marbling until the epoxy is evenly covered and then I'm going to just add a little bit right around the perimeter there's ever so slightly a crack right here and a little bit right there and I'm just gonna put epoxy in there don't make your eyes too small by building this out onto your eye. And then if there were any, it looks like we might have had a little pin right there. This is a really good time to take a little bit of that epoxy and fill that little pinhole. That'll just go away, you won't even know that's there. Um, I'm excited about these eyes. They look very, very nice. Did you tell them about the eyes? Nope, I haven't last, said a word. You haven't? Did you just tell them they were top secret caribou eyes last <laughs> week? Um, no, with the, uh, um, you know, there's been a kind of a upside down with the eye industry. And um, for a while we couldn't get eyes for even our customers. and. Uh, not even ourselves. I mean, we had to, um, you know, kind of wait and call and call and call sometimes to get our, our orders filled. And um, we've had, for years, used um, acrylic eyes, the Europe eyes, and we've used live eyes for our birds um, that go in Corey's heads. And we had quite a sampling of uh, um, live, eye, live eyes for deer and bear and bobcat. And uh, we started taken a second look at those, and when we weren't able to get uh, glass eyes, we started using um, the live eyes in there, and exceptional. You take them out of the bag, and you will be so excited at the look of them, because you can't get any clearer than clear glass, or any brighter, but these are. Um, I don't know, Kate, if you girls, one of you girls can zoom in on that. These are a gorgeous crystal clear eye. And this is a white tail. Oops, I went the wrong way. There you go. Um, like the deer, I think they come in, oh man, seven or eight different numbers. Um, and, and that's all the pattern of the iris and uh, the darkness, the shade. Um, they're a beautiful, beautiful eye. Um, they come in everything. They come in. Uh, oh gosh! Crocodiles, yeah. to ocelots, to uh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, every bear, every bear, every cat, every reptile, every bird. Um, they're beautiful eye. And so, um, not having caribou eyes, um, I use caribou eyes when we set eyes for you people. What a couple weeks ago, and. Um, they, they look pretty nice, they and they're, they're easy, they're very durable, they are, you know, acrylic, and you can scratch them, so yeah. um, I chose to use my go-to standard bamboo stick, um, which I really like, but um, wood tools or plastic tools is what you're going to want to use if you're using acrylic eyes. Um, you can use, I think, mild solvents on them, alcohol to clean yeah. them. Um, there's plexiglass cleaners. 
uh, just you know, be careful with them and you will get by with them better um, than you will glass eyes. Um, they're dollar for dollar, they're a better value than glass eyes and probably easier to manufacture, uh, more readily available. They come in uh, white banded, a few different styles of white banded. They come in, this is called a parabolic, which uh, is a little bit similar to uh, um, defined cornea. And um, we're excited about them. We like them. Um, yeah. I'm and we will have a excited. whole stockpile of them in a couple weeks. That's exciting. We have some That's... now that we've been, been using. A lot of customers have been calling in asking for them. And um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the Facebook posts. There's a lot of taxidermists using them now. Um, but uh, give a pair a try. You'll be impressed. Yeah, that's that's exciting. Um, nothing's worse than getting ready to put something together and having to struggle to find a pair of eyes for it. Here's a fox eye. You can show them. Oh, look at the forest behind me. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that camera work. That's a, yeah, very good. Um, and we got bear, we got boar, we've got uh, more species than you'll ever want for. And uh, the birds, they got exceptional wood ducks, two or three different style of wood ducks. They polish up nice. This probably won't show much. It's a Four. Um, but they're nice eyes. Get a little bit of, yeah. There you go. All different, all different colorations. They're real, really, really nice. Yeah. And how did that go? Well, it's in there. Good. <laughs> good it's good, got good. a little light freckle on the Perfect. bottom lid. Um, you want to show him his lip? I can do that. Do the bottom lip. Um, can we turn him upside down? Yep. yep. Those antlers are a little on the heavy side, so I'm going to have you help me. Okay, mm -hmm. he's ready to go. Which way do you want to go? That oh, way? Let's try it. Try it. Um, whoops, wrong one. Hold it. There you go. Now try. Okay. Get the bush out of the way. Should be good. That work? Yeah, perfect. Can you guys see that? Okay. Now, his lip actually dried reasonably good, but I've got a little void. where the skin on the bottom separated from the skin on the top, it didn't really pull out, probably just a wider lip slot and a um, little bit thicker skin. So I'm going to fill that and I'm going to, I have a couple little dents and dings in the bottom lip. I'm going to recoat that and show you how to texture it. So now I'm gonna need your epoxies. I have a little bit. It's kind of purpley. The, oh, I could probably use that, you think? It's sure. Pretty, yeah, sure. It's, it's pretty good. That'll be plenty good. And the color's good already, and then take your water. Yep. I have water in the big cup and alcohol in the pink cup. Don't drink it. Now I'm just going to put a little, little skin of epoxy sculpt. I'm actually going to fill my my separation between the bottom and top lip. I'm going to dip this in water, re-score in my bottom lip, then we're going to texture it. Now make sure you're not, you're not turning him into a tobacco chewer, so don't. <laughs> Less is best. Less is best, that's right. 
But in all the reference, you see that. You see that lip skin for my, on a caribou exposed on the top and, and a pretty prominent lower lip too. And they have a, a real distinct texture on especially their upper top lip. And I think that's probably for chewing little tundra vegetables. Um, they have a kind of a hard pad up there. And um, it dried real nice. You fleshed that. You must have fleshed it real accurate because it, it didn't shrink up. It didn't distort. So I'm going to leave that. And you can do this with other species too? Um, you know, I was someplace, and one of the judges was running around with a whole bag, the whitetail judge was running around with a whole bag of bottom lips for a deer. Oh, and really? I was amazed, and the purpose <laughs> was, he said, they always shrink up anyway, so he said, I tell everybody, cut that off and stick in an artificial sure. one. And it, it kind of, I've never done it, but I, th I think the idea has merit. I've never heard of that. I like that. They were a little pink. They looked almost like your nictitae membrane. Sure. He said, cut it off. You're going to have to replace it anyway. And I went, hmm. Wow. Who was that fancy white tail judge? I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Okay, now I'm just trying to smooth this. I want to make sure I have no lumps and bumps. Nothing but something that looks like a lip. Couple more little pieces. Now you can smooth this out like um, you said um, alcohol, is that what I'm using? Um, or is that water? A little, uh, the cloudy one is alcohol and the big one is water. I want alcohol. <laughs> I've been using water. Wondered why it tasted so funny. <laughs> um, another thing I like to use is safety solvent. Yeah. Safety solvent works really good, made by um, Dave Brummel at Aves. And safety solvent. Um, does turn your epoxy very soft and it'll turn it mushy, so don't overdo the safety solvent. It's a great product, but you can turn your epoxy into something a little difficult to work with. Okay, now I have completely glued his top and bottom lip together. He has no way to eat or chew, but we're going to fix that. Now I covered most of my skin with the uh, epoxy also. I'm going to take any kind of a cutting tool. I could use a knife. Um, scalpel's a little, little too thin. I've got just a little ceramic tool. I'm going to re-establish his lip line lip separation. You must be explaining really, really well because there's no question. Not one question. That's People might be. be off to the 4th of July early. Okay, now I, I re-scored his lip line but I need to change the angle of this just a little bit.
if we don't do it good enough when we're off the air, we have to grind all this out and do it again. <laughs> and go back and fix. Okay, now, I have covered up, you probably can't see it just the best. We'll straighten it up for you. I have covered up his entire texture on his bottom lip, but I've got it really nice and smooth. Looks kind of phony. Normally, I would let this set for half hour, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to drag some striations down his lip in different lengths. Looking at your lips to see. <laughs> Don't copy They're mine. A little caribou-y <laughs> looking. Okay, now I just gave his lips some striations. Um, then we always have lots of um, texture pads around. This is a texture pad, and I can't tell you what it is. I want to say it's from the back corners of a crocodile mouth or something like that. It's yeah. something, but it's my go-to for skin. It works really, it's really well. Um, I'm just going to get this wet with water. We have these from... Hippo skin, Cape yeah. Buffalo noses, uh, walleye scales, all kinds of them. And it's nothing more than latex. I think early on when we first started um, doing lives, we showed people how to make them. Yeah. I'm going to lay this right on here, and I'm going to press in that texture. Customer's going to think that's really neat, and he has no idea that it probably came from a crocodile. Or a melon from the supermarket. Or a melon. That, we have one of those, too. That's one of the best ones. Is I don't know what it is, but it's some kind of squash, I think. And this is just a, a bunch of crisscrossy um, skin pattern. And with a little bit of paint... Um, that's going to look pretty natural. Enough to fool a cow caribou. <laughs> and the top lip is good enough that um, I don't think we have to do anything with the top lip. And then soften all. I'm softening all my little cuts with a soft brush. What do you always tell them about repairs, texture? Color and texture. That's yeah. the only two things you have to, worry, have to deal with. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Color and texture. Well, you got very good at it, too. <laughs> um, color and texture. Um, we have a little bit of color in the paint that you put in, mm -hmm. enough that we can airbrush it, um, and texture. Um, this is it, you know, with the texture. A yep. little bit of scoring with that. Yeah, you could, if it was smooth, 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 perfect, you could paint it as nice of a, as a caribou lip as possible, but it would still not look like a caribou lip until you got the texture in it. Um, okay, do you want to show them what you did with antlers? Because that, that made a huge oh, difference. Oh, sure, sure. Um, um, so these were freeze-dried antlers that were done up there. Mm -hmm. um, they came to us freeze-dried, so that was really, really nice. Um, but packing and so forth, um, just to protect them. You want to lay on the them, side over by you, or, um, I th or they, up and they down? Can, I think they can be up and down. All right. Can, Kate, can you see that? Oh, that might, maybe we should go sideways. They might be able to see a little better like if we're sideways. Yeah, yeah okay. let's do that. Nick Smith says, as someone that is looking forward to getting into taxidermy next January after I take a two-week course, I really enjoy watching your live sessions. Very oh educational my. and informative. Well, and then Craig Metz, our first question of the evening, it's says, I have a question for you. Pupil location in the eye opening, question mark. Look centered, Stick that up and down. Just for the heck of it. Just Are caribou case. different pupil right location than a white tail? I would say not. Pupil say location? That, yeah. Not to me. I would say I might not would be say, right, but not to me. 
No, I would think they would be pretty much, they'd follow all of the deer family, probably bottom of the pupil sitting on the center line so that the pupil looks a little on the high side, I think would be a good shaded rule by the, maybe. Shaded by the top lid a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, good just question, looking Greg. at these antlers, first when they came to us, um, we don't know, you know, the customer says, my outfitter says they can freeze dry them really, really good, they'll look great. Well, we don't know their version of great <laughs> compared to our version of great. So you're taking a chance of what you're going to get back. Um, these came back. We were happy with them. We thought they were nice. They were kind of packed in bubble wrap and things like that. But they're kind of matted. They needed something to look lifelike. Um, yeah. Looking at these now, this one looks really good. And this one not so much. And this is the one that you worked on a little bit yeah. before live. Yep. Yeah, I just played with it a little bit to see if we could get some life to it. Um, and it, it's really nothing more than just kind of getting that matted look to fluff up. And I just went through a series of brushes um, and tried to back blow it. You'll note, or back brush it. You'll notice that there are different, almost like hair patterns, cowlicks throughout the, the velvet. And so I just started working my way back. You'll notice there's probably quite a bit of loose hair in it. Um, caribou hair is very, very dense. And so you're not going to notice a few if your brush has some hair in it when it's during this process. But you can kind of see, I'm just going to work this small area here. And velvet's really, really difficult. And to get it, in a state to where it can be saved is not easy. It's a, a skin with actual hair on yeah. it and it will deteriorate as fast as any animal once it's yeah. died. And it's thin and it's right on the surface and it's dark so it's going to absorb Full blood, heat. full of yeah. moisture. Yep, lots of, lots of negatives so you got to be real careful with velvet. Um, the better it's taken care of in the field the better it's going to look. I think any of you guys from out west where they're getting a lot of velvet antlers know all about that. Um, I'm going to use just, now that I've got it a little bit um, fluffed up, this is just hair conditioner. and I don't want to add a whole bunch of moisture, but I'm just going to give it a real light dust. And then I'm going to brush that through it to help with a few of these Calyx, I don't know, there may have been tape or he might have sat on those spots. But um, with just some time and grooming, um, fluffing these, this velvet up on these antlers really made a difference. Um, actually adds a lot of mass if you get, them, if you get the hair mass, to stand. Said, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, really makes them look like they're considerably bigger in customers like that so and something about these we have no idea though they were freeze-dried everything in them has been dried and will stay looking like this for years to come but we don't know what kind of bug proofer if anything was used in these so there is an organic skin under that hair that a bug could find sometimes so yeah. I'd suggest um, treat these with Protex Mount Care, Protex Pre-Soak, um, maybe one of the Mount Medics products yeah. um, that would soak in and brush out and not leave any kind of a film on it um, to be a deterrent to bugs because um, there's I, something to eat underneath here. I think you did that when these came in. I'm almost we did. positive, yeah. Yep. Um, as soon as they came in, I think you doused them pretty good with Protex. Now that you say that, I forgot about that. Um, but just spend some time with them and work that hair, get it lining up in the hair, natural hair patterns and you'll really, it doesn't look like you've done much when you're up close, but when you flip it over and you complete a big section, you'll see there's a vast difference between. Um, oh, you can see it, your main that, beam is almost as big as your paddle. 
Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Um, and then your customer realizes he's going to go home and he's going to carry him like this. He's going to grab up here and he's going to leave big yeah. fingerprints in him. Um, kind of show him how to take his wife's hairbrush and uh, <laughs> back brush it just a little bit. Or the dog brush. He can, uh, or you can order him a special brush from here. Um, these brushes are really nice too, by the way. That was a shameless plug, but um, that's shameless a really, plug. a really, really nice brush for a lot of the little details. It worked quite a bit better. I kind of worked through both brushes and I keep coming back to this one. There's another little square one that worked good too, but this little angle brush works great inside the ears. and. Um, they're just really, really handy to have around over the eyes, around the tear duct. You can really get some loft to it. But um, whatever it takes, you may find that your velvet is um, more or less dense than the velvet we have here. You might take a little brass brush, a little wire brush. Those work good too. Um, whatever it takes to get that um, velvet to stand up. And if you look at fresh reference pictures of, of live animals or, or fresh velvet, Boy, they, they just, they look round. They just look really, really And we have really a lot fluffy. of people call um, and they want to replace velvet that got scuffed off or, you know, something happened to it. And we do carry flocking in different lengths, yeah. which in the right hands can be used to patch, you know, and, and maybe camouflage bad areas in your velvet. Um, they make the... Um, I'm not sure what it's called, but the electronic. Those, yeah, static. Sta yeah, yeah, that make them remember. stand up, and that's another option too. And there are companies that do do put velvet on antlers yeah. that can have gotten really good at it. And that would be another option too, if if your velvet didn't handle the shipping and your customers handling that um, replacing it would be another good option too. But. Um, then we would just go over the whole thing and kind of continue um, grooming and fluffing and brushing and, and the whole animal needs after mounting. He could be, um, he could stand some time. I might straighten him up if you grab those yeah. antlers. Yep. That's somewhere Good. right in there. Sturdy. Yeah. Now the other thing we did is on the back. There we go. We're going to put a piece of uh, leather. We oftentimes finish the back of our pedestals with leather, so we um, took a scalpel and cut this. All this was hanging out about here. We cut it back, what, maybe an inch or two to start mm -hmm. with, just so we don't have a whole lot of hide to work with. And then today we took a scalpel and trimmed it, leaving just enough that you're going to have a piece of leather come up and meet that. And we, mm -hmm. for years, we would put the leather on, and because we didn't do such a good job, we would always put a braid of leather around the whole perimeter. It took us probably three to four hours to make that, that braid, braid to go around yeah. there. Then you started yeah. doing it really, really careful and it looked real nice. Um, so we left less than an eighth of an inch overhang. It wants to come loose from the form a little bit. I think we'll glue that tight and then um, put the leather on the back with contact cement yeah. and that'll be all finished. We're not gonna have any trim around it. We're not gonna have any braid. This yeah. will cover it. But yeah. now that has to be trimmed and the bad thing that I've seen people do is use a scalpel and as they're trimming they got a razor sharp oh, yeah. scalpel and they go th all the way through the hair leaving a big chomp out of here you know I've seen that many yeah, many times especially working pretty. with students and so yeah. be careful of that um, I tried to do more pulling and less cutting you know yeah, yeah. Um, that works really really well um, another quick tip on that. I think we've done that a time or two for them, put leather on. I think on. so, too. Um, it also works really good to take just a, your airbrush quick and run around that perimeter. Um, paint just a little bit over that Bondo, so in case I'm you have a I'm just going to look really paint. nice. I think I he's going to so. be pretty impressive. Nice, nice uh, 
hickory base down here, a hexagon with that branch coming up the back, which he'll be attached to, and a little bit of habitat, a little tundra habitat, maybe yeah. some some oranges and and reds from yeah. the Alaska tundra. I think, I think he's going to be really nice. Yes. We did good. I think. And the winner today, when yeah. you say the name, oh, yeah. the winner. Um, they're going to get, this is a deer coloration number seven. And um, I mean, when you look at this iris, it is stunning. It's just gorgeous. They are very pretty. Very, very pretty. Um, and you're going to get a pair of these and give them a try. Um, be careful. Use plastic or wood tools. Yeah. Um, clean them with alcohol or alcohol or plexiglass cleaner. Um, you're yeah. going to be amazed at how nice these mount, how nice they look. Treat them just like a glass eye, but be yes. gentle. And the winner is Brendan Conrad. Brendan, you're going to like them. Yep. Put them yep. in a put them in a white tail, and you'll be you'll be very impressed. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> stunning. It's, it's stunning. stunning. Yeah. Uh, we get excited just looking at the package. We. We pull them out, and we've got a lot of colorations we haven't seen yet. And um, we open them up, and we go, we get pretty excited about them. Yeah. They're nice. They're going to make a nice mount. And, you know, um, everybody's afraid of plastic. You know, it's a yeah. high-grade acrylic optical um, composition. Yeah. Um, I think you're seeing the transition to acrylic I would say and I'm yeah. sure the glass people will say I'm don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about but I, th I think um, you will see glass going by the wayside just because of the expense and the hassle hassle yeah. in making it and um, computers can do so much now with irises and coloration yeah. stuff I think it's going to be the yeah. I mean we've yeah. used them forever and Fish never and really and... dwelt on them for a big game but Brandon try it I think you'll like it Thanks for joining us.